What's -a going on guys? It's a Luke from the Emma Gardner channel here with another very exciting episode for you today. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to take tomatoes right from the garden and turn them into the most beautiful, authentic, whole canned tomatoes that you've ever seen. So in this episode, like I said, we're going to do it authentically. The reason why is because I like making authentic Napoli style pizza. I absolutely love Neapolitan style pizza because it's something that connects us to a culture that has done this for centuries. It's something that I really like to do because food is what connects us. And in order to connect to their culture, you have to connect to their food. And that means using the most authentic ingredients and the most authentic methods so that you can you know, best replicate that and turn an eating experience rather than just a meal time into a journey. You know, you're, you're traveling over to Italy and you're tasting their food the way that it's been tasted, uh, the way that it's been prepared and the way that it's tasted for hundreds of years. And so I really love that. And um, it's just something that I've always had a passion for. So one of the things when I'm making an Italian style pizza that I always run into is that when you're using um, tomatoes that have been canned in the US using the standardized methods of food preservation that we have, it's slightly underwhelming. It's not that it's you know not amazing, pizza's great, but it's slightly underwhelming. And that's because there's a lot missing. There's a lot that's added that's, uh, you know, an Italian grandma would say is not necessary. There's a lot of things that are done that are a little bit over the top. Um, and I, I, I say that just because it's my own personal opinion. That I think in the US here, we can tend to kind of get a little over, uh, overly sanitary, if that's okay for me to say. I think it's probably pretty well known that, you know, we're very sanitary here in the U.S. and um, it can lead us to really sacrifice a lot of things with food quality and flavor because of those kind of heightened sanitary requirements. And so by no means do I sacrifice food safety and by no means would I, uh, would I serve this on a pizza in like a, a restaurant because it's not, you know, it's not to the book of what is required. This is just for our household and it's something that I use and I enjoy. But like I said, you have to understand that this is not by the book. This is not by the ball canning book. This comes right from Italian grandmas over in Italy. And the thing that I've always kind of had a question of and that I've just questioned in general is if there's a culture that's been doing this for hundreds of years and the US says, don't do this, it's very dangerous, you'd expect there to be thousands if not millions of Italian grandmas dropping dead from uh, you know foodborne illnesses but they don't and they still do it to this day and there's many videos that you can even watch on YouTube of authentic Italian grandmas that are making authentically canned tomatoes and I love that I just love kind of learning from them and emulating what they do because they have something to share and and I just like learning and I've taken those methods, I've used them, and I can safely say I really enjoy them. It gives the tomatoes a rich body that's just minerally, it's, it's uh, balanced with acidity and sweetness. It's not overly salty and it's not very basic. One of the things about US canned tomatoes are that there's kind of a basicness to them. They're just very just acidic and there's not a lot of mineralness and a lot of richness. And that can also be because the tomatoes are not grown in mineral rich soil. They're just kind of grown in whatever soil they'll grow in and they're not fed a really well balanced uh, diet of, of minerals like they are in Italy when they're grown on the side of a, a volcanic mountain. You know, you're not getting those, all those minerals that are in the soil and, and that can definitely contribute to some of the flavors but it's also, you know, the fact that so many of them are canned in aluminum cans. There's so many of them that are uh, using just basic iodized salt or, um, you know, or like canning salt. Whereas these recipes use sea salt, you know, just beautiful, rich sea salt as natural as it comes with all the minerals included in it. You know, it uses whole basil leaves right from the garden. Whole basil leaves that have been washed, mind you. It's important to wash your stuff. It also includes fresh, homegrown paste tomatoes. We have San Marzano's, which are the most authentic as you can get tomatoes. But we also have some Pisano, we also have some Roma, and we also have some, uh, some Opalca in here as well. Just a good, a good mix, but very, uh, very authentic tomatoes for this recipe. And we also use glass jars. And this is, again, something that has come from Italian grandmas 
over in Italy. So if you disagree with this and you just you find this to be uh, conflicting or difficult for you to put on your family's table, I understand. There's a lot of uh, a lot of fear based around food safety, and I just I always say you know do your research, do what you feel safe, and um, and no one is forcing you to do this. I just wanted to share with you what I was doing because I posted over on Facebook what I was doing, and it caused a lot of uh, well caused a lot of concern on one one part of the party. And then the other part of the party was like, I want to learn. I want to see what you're doing. This looks incredible. It looks absolutely beautiful. And, uh, and so that's why I'm doing this today. You know, not to, not to ruffle any feathers, just to show you what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rinse my tomatoes. Then I'm going to dump out the water, rinse them again, and then repeat a third time. I just want to get all the dirt and grime off of the tomatoes so that they're as clean as possible. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop my tomatoes, whole tomatoes, right into the boiling pot of water. I need to boil them for about 30 to 45 seconds, but no more than that. We don't want them to be mushy, but we just want the skin to slightly separate from the inside flesh. All right, in they go. We're going to do these in batches because I don't want to cool the water off too much. I want to keep it real nice and hot. Also, make sure you peel off all the uh, all the tomato bo uh, the the stems on the tomatoes. Okay, we just got a colander here inside of another bowl to catch any drips, and we're just going to take with a slotted spoon the tomatoes out of the boiling water. That way, we can keep the uh, the water boiling for the second batch of tomatoes. And the thing you want to look for is you want to look for the bottom of the tomato, the very tip of the tomato, to kind of have like a wrinkly, pruny look to it, as you can see. That's the separation that we're looking for. We don't want them to be mushy. We just want them to be lightly separating from the, uh, from the tomato so we can push the skin right off. Okay, now while the tomatoes are still hot, what we want to do is we want to take a paring knife and just trim the top shoulders off the tomato. Discard that, go to the compost pile. We take our fingers, we make a ring. These are pretty hot still. We just take a ring and then just push from the, from the bottom of the tomato up. we go just like that sometimes if they're a little if they're a little on the uh, on the tough side they don't want to slide off but there we go this one's just popping right off there see that skin is so thick on these paste tomatoes that it basically is like I said it's just like a sock just take that top off push it right out Whoop. there we go Now the Italian grandmas, they take their thumb and pinch off that stem and do it that way. Ooh, that is way too hot for me to, I like the knife method. <laughs> but if you're doing it authentically, I mean, you might as well do it 100%, right? Um, but no, I, I can only, yeah, I can only handle so much. It's so hot. This one's a little green on top. I'm gonna have to cut this one. All right, and then we're just gonna take a little bit of salt and sprinkle it over top of the tomatoes. This is going to help to draw out some of that moisture so that there's not as much water or juice in the can when it comes to, uh, to the canning process. We're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes to start drawing some of that moisture out, and then we'll uh, we'll strain it through a colander, so that way we have just the tomatoes and all the juice is gonna go down the drain. Okay, now we're just gonna take the tomatoes, and as you can see, look at all that water that comes out from the salt. We're just gonna dump, dump those in the colander, and that way we can get all that liquid out. And moisture will still continue as the salt soaks into the tomatoes. It'll still continue to draw some moisture out, um, but this is getting a lot of that moisture out that's just really unnecessary. And what you can do is you can actually take the bowl that you had them in originally, and, uh, and this way you can just keep them on the side as you're processing them up. They're going to continue draining into this bowl here. So about 20 minutes ago, we started our stock pot. This is going to be our hot water bath here. We had to use a stock pot because we're using quart jars and uh, you need about an inch or two of water above the top of the jar 
to properly, uh, to properly can them. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to get this up to a rolling boil. That way we can take our jars already packed with tomatoes and put them right into boiling water. That way we're not waiting on this thing to come up to temperature, which can take 15, 20 minutes to get that much water boiling. So we did that ahead of time. And uh, now all we have to do is pack our jars. Let's go. Okay, now comes the fun part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a basil leaf, put it in the bottom. We're gonna take our tomatoes. And we're going to set them in as neatly as possible. <laughs> Even with wide mouth, big hand problems. So we're just gonna pack them in there as close as we can because you don't want a whole lot of air space or a whole lot of uh, you know, um, gaps, which will cause some air space. We're just gonna keep packing these in here. And if you crush them a little bit, that's totally fine. You're gonna release some good juices. And when you get about half full to three quarters full, what you wanna do is you wanna take some more basil leaves. And again, these are washed basil leaves and they're whole basil leaves. I know a lot of you guys are worried about using basil leaves. A lot of the um, ball canning books say don't use whole basil leaves because it can affect the pH and stuff like that. And I'm not necessarily a, a subscriber to that. I mean, it might, but again, Italian grandmas, just keep remembering that. You know, Italian grandmas have been doing this exactly this way for hundreds of years. And if there was an issue, they wouldn't be doing it for hundreds of years. So, all right. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a teaspoon and a half of salt. This is slightly more salt than a normal uh, than a normal recipe of canned tomatoes, and that's because the salt is going to help to uh, kill a lot of the bacteria and create an inhospitable environment for things like mold and stuff like that. So it's going to help to sterilize uh, your food and keep it um, you know keep it food safe. So throw another basil leaf in there for good measure, and then continue packing the jars. Now we're not using any olive oil. We're not using any vinegar. We're not using any lemon juice. We're just going to use the juice from the tomatoes and the tomatoes themselves. We're gonna pack these in as close as possible. And you gotta just really cram it in there. So these ones on top are gonna to start busting open, but you gotta fill the jar all the way up to the top. There we go. All right, there we go. And as you can see, we have our head space. So it's not gonna be overflowing. And all we're going to do is wipe the rim down, put on our lid and our ring, put it in the hot water bath, and we'll be good to go. Finger tight, no more than finger tight. We're good to go. Look at how beautiful that is. And the thing is, since we're packing these in a vacuum, the basil is going to stay green. A lot of times people wonder if the basil is going to turn nice and, and you know, dark brown or black, and it doesn't. These were already finished, and as you can see, the basil has kept its color. Absolutely beautiful. All right, and we're almost done. The last thing we have to do is just let our jars sit in the hot water bath for up to 40 minutes. If you're using pines, which are smaller, you need 30 minutes. Quartz, which is what we're using, 40 minutes. This way they're all gonna be up to temperature and properly sterilized, and uh, the food inside should be safe. Once we pull them out, we don't want them to cool very quickly, so what we wanna do is cover them with like a blanket or a, a, a thick towel, something that's gonna help insulate and help the jars to slowly cool. That way there's no thermal shock and cracking. And then the very final thing we have to do is after a couple days, we wanna remove the rings. It's very important that we do this because the rings can set on top of the, the lids, and if there is any botulism or food spoilage, the, the, uh, the seal will break. But if the ring is on the lid, you can't really tell if anything has gone wrong. So you gotta take the ring off, and that way, uh, if the seal is compromised, the lid will just pop right off instead of needing uh, a lot of force to break it off and break that seal. And that's a great way to know if your food inside is safe to eat. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. This is definitely, again, not by the book, but it's how Italian grandmas have been doing this for hundreds of years, and I really trust them. I love them. I have a lot of uh, respect for what they do, and it really, truly does make all the difference on a pizza. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.